Good Sunday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing. Looking at impacts for the next three days, we have significant wind pa- impacts continuing across parts of eastern Idaho and Wyoming, all the way down through most of Utah and eastern Nevada, uh, particularly the dark red where gusts of 50 miles per hour are possible. In all these areas, fuels are receptively dry and in some of our southern areas near record levels. Um, in addition, these yellow dots here indicate where the possibilities of some isolated thunderstorms could occur later this afternoon. Uh, showers will be minimal with any of these today and Monday. There could be some isolated lightning, not a lot, but things that could complicate uh, situations and also some outflow boundaries in the vicinity of some of our current large fires. The wind areas uh, push to the south but still continue through Tuesday. Look at precipitation. A lot of this is overdone here, but in parts of Idaho, we did have some very light amounts across the central mountains of Idaho. Much of this further across north Nevada was just uh, false radar echoes. We had no lightning detected in our area here on the right-hand side in the last 24 hours. Uh, Very active across uh, the region fire-wise. We had light initial attack with uh, just uh, less than a dozen new fires for about a thousand acres, but existing fires in the yellow, uh, large fires in the open circles. You can see fires in many quadrants continuing across the Great Basin. It has been very dry for the past seven days on the left-hand side and the past 14 days on the right-hand side. Even these shades of blue across southern Utah and southern Nevada only indicate uh, a few hundredths of an inch of precipitation. Uh, look at our monsoon season, kind of tells a tale across uh, eastern Utah especially and across parts of southern Nevada. Uh, monsoonal rainfall only about 50% of normal, in some cases even less than that. Uh, that's part of the reason why we're drawing, getting fires in many of those areas. Uh, look at our current ERCs. You can see in the purples and dark reds we have uh, above the 90th percentile to near record levels extending down into the southern two-thirds of Utah a good portion of Nevada as well and far southern and southeastern Idaho did have some moderation up in the mountains of central Idaho but still a mix of some isolated areas of critically dry in the red. Look at some current ERCs you can see starting here in the Wasatch uh, you went to Cache uh, including some where the Pole Fire is Pole Creek Fire you can see we are at record level ERCs for this time of year not too far from all-time records Uh, dry across western Nevada as well near record levels and even as far south as uh, down to uh, south central Utah ERCs are at record dry levels due to the lack of a significant monsoon and well above their early July levels and our live fuel moisture across parts of eastern Utah and uh, central Utah you can see down here down between 80th and 70th uh, actually probably 65 percent very dry also across parts of north central Nevada near record levels down about 65 percent so live fuel in the sage also critically dry. Look at our satellite imagery we have a lack of clouds across the region right now we do expect to see some convective development across parts of the Wasatch into the Uintas later today but it's a tight packing of these height lines through here to indicate the strong southwest winds which will continue again today. So here's the weather map on the left hand side with those tight height lines in the orange shade of drier air punching in and here's our high risk on the right hand side for winds across parts of eastern Nevada most of Utah portions of uh, Idaho into Wyoming and here are the winds on the left hand side you can see on the orange to purple shades gusts of 30 to as high as 45 miles per hour also up in Idaho as well on the right hand side is precipitation there's a expectation on some of the models that we could see some convection flare up not too far just to the east of the uh, Pole Creek fire extending out into the Uinta Basin. Uh, These rainfall amounts are minimal, less than a tenth of an inch. If this happens, even though it's a small area, there is a possibility of new ignitions and also some strong outflow boundaries as well. We see this pattern again on Monday, some dots here indicating some of that moisture, maybe another chance of isolated lightning across the Uinta Basin, otherwise dry, breezy conditions, but the most critically strong winds will be to the south, where you see the orange shades here on the right-hand side. Uh, You can see the winds here shrinking in aerial coverage, but still a lot of orange and purples across central and southern parts of Utah and parts of southern Nevada. Look at these dry humidity levels, single digits across just about all of Nevada, uh, teens to near 20% across Utah, and low to mid-teens across uh, parts of southern Idaho. 
On Tuesday, trough full of pressure sharpens up here, so that'll continue the winds through here, punching in dry air across parts of Nevada into Utah. We continue the risk, uh, a high risk for winds, so you see the orange on the right-hand side against single-digit humidity, uh, low to mid-teens elsewhere. And on the left-hand side, you see the shades of wind in the orange and purple, indicating critical levels of gusts of 30, 35 miles per hour. No significant large-scale precipitation expected across the region. We go further down the road on Wednesday, uh, trough full of pressure pushing by through here. Uh, look how dry our seven days on the right-hand side. Many areas in the brown critically dry. Uh, continuing through Thursday, another trough full of pressure off the Pacific Northwest, which will start increasing winds across western areas by the time we get to Friday. And Saturday looks like another wind event shaping up for parts of western Nevada uh, and in maybe southwest Idaho and eventually spreading into Utah as well. So we continue with the winds through the entire seven-day period. No significant precipitation or relief through the entire seven-day period. And the 8 to 14 day does show some promise, cooler than normal temperatures and maybe a wetter than normal signal for the northern third of the Great Basin near normal elsewhere. Normal this time of year is quite dry. Uh, but we could be seeing more cold fronts coming through, maybe some moisture across our northern areas, but the trouble with a sharp boundary between cooler and warmer air, that typically means increasing wind. So we could continue seeing windy conditions across the southern half of the Great Basin during the last week of September. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.